Yeah, you, you you've mentioned some of these these groups before, and it's interesting because you you talked about King Simon, who after he he dies, I think it's his brother or his son who's a King Alexander, That's who right. who it, itself himself is dealing with internal revolt, and and you know you read an account in Josephus, he crucifies eight eight hundred people and then murders their wives and children in front of them while they're dying on the cross to just terrify the population. But his, after Alexander dies, his wife, Alexandria, is written about in very loving terms by Josephus. And he refers to her, I think, as a Sadducee. Yes, yes, absolutely. And so this is a very interesting thing that you point out. I mean, the, the fact that Alexandra Salome uh, can become king after Alexander Yanias and John Hyrcanus before him, um, is sign of that this is, even though we are learning here what is a new type of Judea and a new type of Judaism, is that this is a Hellenistic monarchy in a different way than the other Hellenistic monarchies. But clearly the fact that queens can become king, she doesn't seem to act if we want to talk about it in a, in a gendered manner. She doesn't seem to be it doesn't seem to be queenship. It seems to be that she's acting in kingship, right? She's yeah. just performing the, what, what the king would do. And, but that that in itself is possible. That, that it seems to me is a clear element, especially in Judean society, of the, of the strong Hellenistic influences. It's almost like a, like a paradox, right? That this turning towards a certain type of Judaism is only possible by adopting Hellenistic kingship as its form of government. But you spoke about the Sadducees, and this is a very, very interesting thing. Um, Josephus, as you, as you and I spoke about earlier, right, um, creates these groups, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the Essenes, and the Zealots. And in a way, they're very, very complicated because Josephus is kind of the only one who talks to us about them. Um, interesting. Okay. Josephus also introduces them to us almost like philosophical schools and clearly wants to talk about us about stoics or or platonists in a way that the greek world and the roman world are used to philosophical schools but clearly it's also not how it works so uh, i have to admit i'm totally agnostic about these groups and what we can actually do with them um it seems to be that some of them are you know the 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 gentry the nobility of jerusalem it seems to be that's uh, uh, and certainly the Pharisees, they're the ones we actually know from the Jesus movement, right? Where, yeah. where uh, uh, they, they do pop up in later literatures. But what they are and what they're standing for beyond... I mean, there's a very learned scholar named Albert Baumgarten. He has written a very long book about them. But, but to, me, to me, I have to admit, what we can sense from actually knowing about these different groups is very, very difficult to say. And it's, it's to me, it really is, it underlines the many, many different streams of, of thought and Judaism and Judaistic uh, uh, tendencies. Um, but they're not like, it's not like there's strong political parties or that they're religious systems that you just, you know, that that's what you get born into. It seems to be that some behavior in terms of like can the high priest go to war that makes you for josephus that puts you in the category of this for whether these people themselves would have thought themselves to be in these categories to me i i'm completely i, I mean this is not my center of speciality but in terms of the time i've spent thinking about this it's completely agnostic i think it's largely an external category it's useful because it shows us that there are these many different groups and i think that really is the um it's is emblematic of Judea at this time period that really there is not one stream of thoughts, but that's as far as I would probably go with it. I think I, to be honest, I don't think it's wrong to make these they are anachronistic, but I don't think it's wrong to make these uh, these 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 comparisons because they sometimes can be very useful. So I don't think it's like, let's say if I am baptized Protestant and you're baptized Catholic, I don't think let's say that happens today, right? Yeah. I don't think that's how it was because I don't think there are these clear ritual and cultic differentiations that articulate what you are, right? Because if I if I'm baptized Catholic and uh, Protestant and you're baptized Catholic, 
we can go to a priest or a vicar and he can explain to us very clearly why that's different. Yeah. Right. And I, I, I don't think that's how it was. So that's not what it is. But I also, I think you're absolutely right in outlining that we still have something that we believe in together. I mean, there seem to be some groups. We've, I've mentioned the community at Qumran many times before, right? This group yeah. that decides to go away. For a very long time, by a very famous uh, German scholar whose name I now just escapes my mind, this has been essentialized to say these must be the Essenes. This community at Qumran must be the Essenes. People who are rejecting the political government, they're, they're going into the desert. Uh, I don't think we still think these are the Essenes. Which is, in, in fact, it's, it's far more interesting because now that means we have at least two of these groups, right? Yeah. Who, who are rejecting the central authority. Um, I think what this means is, is, I think a lot of it depends on your social status, about your political, uh, political class and about your political action at the time um, that you may have, because of your class and your upbringing and uh, your, your family, you may have certain leanings in terms of the type of Judaism. Yeah. But I also think that over time you could change it. So I don't think that that you know that if you 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 have to be always a Sadducee. I think that's that's these are not the the directions. And clearly there are some extremist groups, the the zealots, right? There are these extremist groups who 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 perform violence, terroristic acts, right? In the in the Roman period, yeah. um, there are different groups. Okay. But at the same, sorry, I, 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 I don't want to ramble, but they're, they're different groups, but I don't think that they, that the people would have identified themselves as these groups. Yes, some of them are radicals and some of them are the ones who work with the political center, but uh, you can, depending on your age, on your class, you might see this differently. Okay. So this isn't a um, um, Christian versus Protestant group. This is very much a Judaism religion that's dynamic and in flux and not quite set in stone. And these um, are gr groups of people trying to figure it out. Absolutely. Very, very fluid. And, 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 and these groups, I mean, Judifus talks to us about these groups, but, but we see from really the early period. And, and one of the most fascinating things about Judaism in the fourth century is that, that we have these couple of letters in Egypt about a Jewish temple in 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 Egypt, and they want to talk to, um, they want to get a letter from Jerusalem to confirm something about a Jewish uh, a, a, a garrison, and and they don't get a response. And some scholars said, well, it's probably because the people in Jerusalem don't want this other temple to exist anymore. But even Josephus talks to us about the fact that there are still uh, is still a family in the third century that creates a second temple in Egypt. In this time period, apparently the majority of Judeans seems to agree that there should only be one temple. Yeah, it's a... Not in Samaria, uh, not in Egypt, but only in Jerusalem. And, and according to Josephus, it's an almost exact replica of, That's of right. the temple. Exactly, exactly, exactly. But at this time period, it seems to be that it should only be one oh, yeah. for the majority, right? Yeah. How, what that means for all of us and what we believe in, that seems to be completely unclear. Okay. This has been an extremely fascinating discussion. Is there anything you, you feel we, we could have or maybe should have talked about that we, we haven't touched on? <laughs> there's mountains, right? But, uh, <laughs> you, you teach a whole course on this. So that there's um, yeah, many. <laughs> yeah, um, there's no, hours I, and hours. I, I really enjoyed the conversation. I mean, I think one of the things I've learning more and more and more is 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 also with my with my work in in Idumea and Maresha is that it's such a complex region. It's such a small space, right? Within the proximity of a hundred kilometers, you have a different a uh, different uh, zone, a different, completely different layer of geo geomorphology, a different, diff different irrigation, a different watershed. And, uh, 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 and we have so many layers of the cultural history of this region that's still there to be discovered. And, and on top of that is, is, is that we, you know, that is, as you were describing at the outset, is this, it's this region that's at the nexus of different empires trying to inter interact with one another. Uh, I, I, I really enjoy talking to you. I could talk about this for hours, but uh, maybe we should do that another time. <laughs> I'd love to have you back on the show sometime. Perfect. Great. No, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Boris, for taking time out of your busy schedule 
And uh, this has been an extremely fascinating and entertaining conversation. Thank you again for your time. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.